All right, guys. So we got all the way from Chicago, Philip Boxa. I hope I pronounced your name right. Boxa. Boxa. Philip Boxa, all the way from Chicago. He came all the way down to Southern California, Orange County, just to see us. No, not really. He's uh, he's here on vacation with his wife, but he graciously came over. He's gonna spend some time. Gonna inter interview him, ask him some questions. So stay tuned. So to give some quick background on Philip, he built up, well, he's currently running Booking Koala, but he also built up a huge maid service company. And that's an industry that's notoriously hard to scale. So I'll kind of let him get into that and just let's start with your story. Yeah, so I started when I was 19 years old with my best friend from high school. And I mean, before that, I was working with my dad mm -hmm. and then he was selling stuff on eBay, right? So I approached him because well, the goal was to start making money. Like, I'll be honest with you, it was nothing more than that. And once we started, it was like, let's do this. What's going to make us the most money? And my mom was actually a, uh, a cleaner, right? So it's actually the same kind of story as you, right? So you, your mom was trying to, you were trying to help out your mom. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to help out my mom and get her jobs. And we knew it was going to be easier to start with her that way because, well, I mean, just get her jobs and we already have our first cleaner, right? So we started to do that together. And then fast forward to three years, we did over 5 million in revenue. So at our peak, it was 2.1 million. Yearly? Yearly, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. And what did that look like? Was that as you started to scale up in the revenue, did you start to like, obviously, you know, you, you encountered some difficulties with scaling, but how, how hard was it? at managing that $2.1 million of your company with all those cleaners? Like how many cleaners did you have and how tough was that for you? I mean, when you look at it back then, we had like 70 cleaners. Um, at our peak, I think we reached almost 100. But it wasn't that hard. Like it was just a lot of stuff that you would have to do at any business, right? Put out mm -hmm. fires and stuff like that. I mean, it's just normal day to day, but it wasn't that hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's just tough, you know, managing labor, scaling a business. Like you're in the software world now. So how does it compare to, you know, now you built something one time, you can sell it pretty much infinite amount of times, right? Yeah, yeah. Versus if you want to add more revenue in the cleaning business, you have to add more cleaners. Right. Two different businesses, mm -hmm. right? So it's like one is labor. If you want to scale, you got to hire more people. This one, I mean, you got one viral video and you got a ton, ton of customers coming your way. So it's like two different businesses, the management, I mean, my roles were different. Here we were managing cleaners with my business partner. And here, I mean, I'm mainly focusing on marketing stuff. So it's like two different roles, two different businesses. Mm -hmm. One's more fun too. The other one wasn't as fun, but I mean, it gets the job done. If you're trying to make money, you definitely want to do it. Yeah, yeah. Cleaning businesses are great for cash flow. So you're never going to sell the king of maids? Um, well, to be honest with you, I already tried selling it twice. But I changed my mind every single time. And I, th I do think we're gonna sell it at some point. I just don't know when that's gonna be. Mm. It's just, it makes you a lot of money, right? It's a good cash flow machine. So it's like, why sell it, right? Right, and you're using, are you using independent contractors? Yeah. Yeah, so that makes it also tougher to sell because you don't necessarily like, you know, control the fulfillment. Not well. in house that <sighs> brings you the valuation down a little bit. I honestly don't think so because it just depends how you structure the company. So you've got King of Maids, that's still cash flowing. You still own that business. Uh, do you plan to continue to keep that cash flowing or do you ever plan to sell it? What does that look like? Um, I mean, yeah, it's definitely going to be something that we're going to be doing. We're going to sell it for sure. I just don't know when, because like you said, it is a cash flow machine, mm -hmm. right? So that's actually what we live off of, right? My wife and I, that's the only salary that we take. So booking Koala, none of the founders touch any of that money. And that the purpose of that is because we just want to keep reinvesting it so it grows and give us the best chance of success at that business. So essentially, we have to have something coming in. So maybe when I start taking a booking quality salary at that point, I think maybe then we would sell it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. So you're living completely off the King of Made stuff right now. Yeah. What kind of like what's your timeline on on that? Because I would imagine I mean, you have, you know, your wife as a general manager in there, but there's still some, does it take up any headspace? Like, what does that look like for you as far as focus goes? And because like, a good if you, question. you want to build booking quality to be huge, like it's going to take some focus. 
Not to say you don't. But yeah, it's a good question. Those. I mean, the beautiful part is that that the day to day stuff are taken care of, so I don't really have to focus on much. Mm -hmm. So I would say maybe about an hour per week goes into King of Maids, and at that level, I mean, I could keep going for mm -hmm. for a long time like that. So that's not the issue. I think it's just at one point I don't need two businesses. That that would be the only reason why I would get rid of it probably. Mm -hmm. And then maybe I don't know. Maybe I'll sell it to someone that's already a Booking Koala user. Who knows? Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be really cool. So what? What's your goal with Booking Koala? Like what? Like or no? Let me rephrase that question. When did you go? Okay, you built King of Maids to what it is. What gave you the idea for Booking Koala, and what did that process look like launching that company? Okay. And when did you go all in on Booking Koala? Well, I was doing a couple things actually uh, before Booking Koala. None of them were really working out. Before Booking Koala, actually, I was trying a marketing company like you guys were, and that stuff. I just it didn't feel like it was something that I wanted to do. So that when my partner approached me and he was telling me that we got this opportunity in front of us, we should take it, which was Booking Koala, right? Because we had the software that was already built out. I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it because I didn't have that much money. I mean, money was coming in, but I was investing in a lot of different things. So at that point, I was like, I don't know if we could do it. And then he's like, man, we got this opportunity. Just give me whatever you have and I'll cover the rest, right? So all the employees that he already had, stuff like that, and the savings that he had, he, he matched probably whatever I put in. I never even really asked how much he put in, but whatever I gave him was enough. And we went all in on that. So it was like a hesitation type of thing at first because we didn't know if we could afford to do something like it. Because mm -hmm. traditionally what most people do is they'll take investment, right? A, a ton, a ton of capital mm -hmm. to build a software like that and kickstart. We literally didn't do that. So we were kind of like, I'm not sure if we could do it. But then once we made up our mind, everybody was like, let's work. Let's work seven days a week if we have to and make it work. Um, I mean, people were definitely overworked with this stuff, but we, we kept working and then it finally kicked off. I didn't have to start uh, putting more money into it. It just basically took care of itself. And then after that, well, that's how we met. And then we started growing because you guys are bringing us clients and stuff like that. So things like that. And now it's a lot better. Nice. And how long have you been running Booking Cola? <sighs> Feels like we started Booking Cola when King of Maids came out, right? Because we technically were building out the mm -hmm. software along the way. So 2013 is probably when we started building out the software. And then 2017 is when that idea came to mind where we got together and we're like, okay, let's do this. Let's uh, redo the code so that everybody else can use it and turn that into its own company. So then 2017, 2018, so like a year and a half later is when it was open to the public. So now officially, since it was opened up, three years. So it takes a long time. So like people will tell you like, or they may seem, or it may seem that like it's so quick, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're gonna get rich, you got the software, you could start making money, but in reality, look how long it took to even get to the point where we got the idea and we already had the software built out to then making it public, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like a whole, you could t technically say it's almost 10 years, right? Yeah, it takes reps too. Dude. It just shows like you keep sticking with something, like either it'll turn out really good or you find a new opportunity. That's exactly, better, right? exactly, so yeah. A better vehicle maybe. And that's what I think a lot of people really have to understand. It's patience. And it really takes time. Don't believe in like those shortcuts that people try to sell you or anything like that. Yeah, you could like get help and pay someone for help if, you know, if you're struggling. But like if someone's telling you like it's you're going to be rich in like a year or something like that, it, it's never going to be like that. Yeah, no, 100, I 100% agree with that. So you have a crazy goal with booking Koala. Would you mind sharing that or is that like a private goal? Um, well, the goal is to grow it to a billion dollar company. Right. Um, billion dollar valuation. Right? Billion dollar val valuation. And to do it without taking any outside capital. So that, that's like the ultimate goal. And one of the main reasons is the, the no capital part is because 99%, 99.9% 9 of booking call users will never take any capital out. Right. So you kind of want to be that, like, what do you want to call uh, a mentor for them so they could look up to something and, and show them that like big things are possible, right? I never took out any money when growing King of Maids and within three years that took, right, from zero to over 5 million um, in combined revenue, no capital, then Booking Call started, no capital. And I mean, I'm pretty happy with my lifestyle and how, 
how everything is going. So that's basically the goal and why we're doing it that way. You have a time frame on that goal? I want to do it by 40. So I'm 29 now. So I'll be happy if it's if it's accomplished by then. But if it takes to 50, I'd be fine with that too. Yeah, dude, that's a that's a long time. Like 11 years is, I'm sure by the time you get 40, you're gonna feel like it flies by, right? But absolutely. It's a, it, right now, you've been 29. It's 11 years, and you're probably one of the most patient entrepreneurs I know. Lots of people I know are like fast, boom, boom, like let's do this, like it's gonna make us more money, boom, let's add it on. How I was impatient at first, though. Like man, when I started, it was like go into 10 things at once, but then you start to learn that patience is like a skill and you have to you have to adapt to that and better things come when you're patient. But at first, I think it might be better if you're actually doing more than being patient because you learn so much, even from the mistakes that you make, you're just learning and then you use those things. And when with the combination of patience, you kind of know where to kind of go, if that makes sense. What, what was like a major, like lesson or or what's what's something that happened that made you like taught you that lesson? Uh probably investing a lot of money in the wrong people. So before booking call, I would give someone here like ten, twenty thousand dollars here, put that into this company and build this out and I'll just be an investor, right? And then I would do that like with three different people, four different people. That I was looking at the ideas, not at the people. That was that was the one of the biggest mistakes for sure. I would have been a lot more richer if none of that money was handed out like that because all those all those things failed, right? Mm -hmm. So that was that was definitely one of the biggest ones. So those were just your buddies that you were like. Oh, it was just it was it was buddies, yeah. You're building Uber for X, and you're like, here's yep. money. <laughs> Here, here's some here's some cash. <laughs> nice, yeah. Well, that's cool, man. How do you refrain from? Yeah, because I mean, you see all that revenue coming in from Booking Koala, and a lot of people like new entrepreneurs, they like see that money and they want to spend it, spend it, use it. Like, yeah. how do you refrain from doing that? Or like, how do you not get too gung ho or get ahead of yourself? Uh, well, that all ties into that patience thing, right? You got to yeah. know the goal and then you, you work, you work backwards, right? So you got to make sure that the whole team is on the same page, right? So like, you got to tell the founders, the owners, like, listen, the goal is to reach this valuation. If you want to, spend the money, you got to get a job, right? You got to work on the side and you're not touching any of this money, right? That you, you establish the guidelines right from the beginning. And if everyone understands it, well, then you're off to the races, right? If they don't, then you got a problem and you got to deal with it right away. But I think that would be the thing. And for me, um, it's a lot easier because like I have King of Maids, right? So I don't need the money and we already make a good amount of money, right? So if not for King of Maids, I think I mentioned this earlier, we probably need some kind of capital from somewhere. So like that, that's the beautiful part. And that's another thing I think you teach is to get into businesses that have demand, right? Because growing Booking Koala versus King of Maids, it's two different beasts, right? One, you can start with a thousand dollars. The other one, you need a, a ton of money, a right? More packed, 10 times more. Yeah, so if you that find is. that cash flowing business early on, that could, give you a lifestyle that you're at least comfortable with, it will make everything so much easier after that, right? Because now, I mean, I live very comfortably. I could work whenever I want. I could do whatever I want. I don't have to stress about income, which makes my decision-making so much easier with everything else, right? If someone's stressing, that's when it's like, I need to do this. I need to, how do I get a hundred dollars? I want to take that hundred dollars out of the business, right? Because I need it to survive. That's what makes it a lot harder. So. I, I hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, yeah. that's a great answer. Yeah, build a service business or not a service, but a cash flowing business with proven demand, proven supply and demand. Yep. And then use that to uh, build another company or exactly your lifestyle, and then go on the on the vehicle that's going to take you to the billion. That's what yep. you're doing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's something we talk about all the time on the channel. Like, if you have something that's proven supply and demand, it doesn't matter if it's too saturated like i don't even believe in saturation because the market always makes room for quality absolutely and as long as you're providing great service good customer service and you're fulfilling on what you say you're going to do yeah like you can build a company and yeah i mean that is so true because like we're pretty big in chicago right mm -hmm. and you would think that okay if someone else is coming in like king of maids is taking all the business but we're turning away so many clients because we can't even hire up in time so like that's an opportunity for someone else to get another 10 clients this month, then the next one, then you start to grow from there, right? So there's always, always a ton of 
uh, customers for anyone. It's never too saturated, in my opinion. Yeah, 100%, especially because cleaning and home services in general, and there's other industries like this as well, that uh, there's just way too much demand and not enough supply. Like cleaning, ser home service and cleaning businesses, notoriously hard to scale because you're managing tons of labor. So lots of times, even the bigger guys, like you said, can't fulfill everybody in the whole area because right. there's way more demand. Exactly, so, yeah. exactly. 100%. Any other questions have you got? Like, we've got like over 10 minutes, right? Yep. We're sitting at 12 minutes right now. Not including the stuff before. I would say around 12, minus like cuts and stuff. Yeah. What do you, what do you guys, well, let's close it Shouldn't out. Shouldn't you ask him the question about, that he asked him, because how is he going to No, I think that's it? fine. Yeah. No, 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 it's kind of like a candid thing, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Like a, I've seen interviews where like someone else from the back like asks questions. Yeah, I like think that's cool. Idea. Like yeah. young Jamie, like Joe Rogan. Yeah. Like he always asks questions. Yeah, right? that's cool. Or my you listen to my first million. My first million. It sounds familiar. Who's uh, it? Who's so it by? Sam Parr and Sam, or Sam Parr and Sean Perry. No. no. Oh. They're producers. Yeah. Always in. So yeah. I don't. I don't listen to like much. No. I hate. Really? I hate reading, podcast. You still watching like get into this like how i consume information is what am i doing at that exact moment right so if i'm learning seo i'm going to find every like blog post about it or anything i can to like consume it or study the company not at, like i have to know that you've actually succeeded with it and you're doing it at this moment to like look at it and can, otherwise i don't waste my time like reading anything else or i just don't like doing it that's a good tiktok yeah, cool. no, I have some good TikTok ideas. I'm yeah. thinking one where like, it's like asking millionaires what they do for a living. Oh, and yeah. I'll go, I'll go up to him, and be like, "Hey, man, what do you do?" And he have like the booking koala. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be a promo for booking koala. Like cool. Yeah. So you go at things a lot with skepticism. Um, what do you mean? Well, like, uh, you know, a lot of in this day and age, a lot of people consume a lot of content. Uh huh. And like, uh, you know, a lot of us look at like Alex and. Um, Grant Cardone, whoever, all the big guys, and like we're like, wow, those guys are so successful. But you don't really consume a lot of content. You more look at like what is like what's backing you, you know, what's making you that. Well, I don't like to be on social media, period, because of all the distraction. Like on my phone, I don't have. I think Twitter is the only app that I have. So. Um, and I'm thinking of deleting that as well because I feel like I go on it sometimes. And there's no point, right? Um, cause I mean, there's just so much information on there. It could just steer you completely the wrong way, you know? So I don't, I don't even want that in my, in my head, like just focus exactly on what you need to focus on and go from there. That's it. Everything else doesn't matter. Like if I need to find something, I'll look for it. I don't need you like popping up in front of my face and then me getting some wrong idea of what you're doing. Cause I've been steered the wrong way back in the past. It, by doing that like for example with king of maids we scaled super quickly i've had no social media i mean i've had it but i never went on it right then all of a sudden um i started going on social media and then i see like people like ty lopez and stuff like that and i was like consuming their content and i'm like damn everything after that i was following their advice right so i was like dabbing into little things and i was like i'm failing at all of these so I'm like, what's the problem here? Like their advice is not very good. So then I switched into like not taking their advice, but actually looking at what they're doing, like their funnels behind the scenes. That's when it started to work effectively. And then I always remembered going back to King of Maze days, I never even like took anybody's advice or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? It was just studying other companies. So after that little phase of just like listening to someone's advice, I was like, that doesn't work. I need to go back to the old days of like, this is the role model, whether it's a company or a business, and this is what I'm studying. It could be something as particular as like a company's marketing strategy, like basically look at how they did it, how they're doing it now, and try to dissect it and go from there. Like, I think those are the best ways you're going to learn because it's at that moment, you know? Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it makes perfect mm -hmm. sense, yeah. That's, I've never actually heard somebody with that framework before. So that's actually, like I'm genuinely learning something right now. That's like a really cool framework. I like cool. that a lot. Well, cool, man. Well, let's wrap it up. Um, where can people find you if they want to reach out? And 
Uh, if you're looking to start a cleaning business, Booking Koala is the best software. I've tried it all. Uh, that's how we met, just from using the software. So um, definitely use it if you have a cleaning company. But where can people find you if you want to reach out? Twitter is going to be the only place. I mean, I check it once in a while. It's at Philip Boxall, and that's about it. Cool, man. Well, dude, thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate it. All right, no problem. Peace.